The, well, you know, what's interesting about these things is like um, the, you know, Mark Cuban ended up being the, the guy who invested. We probably pitched about 100 other people. So um, we, we did everything from, um, we actually, we faxed um, a, a business prospectuses when people use fax machines. Um, I feel like I'm from the 60s. Um, so we actually faxed a business plan to Bill Gates' office. Um, that was the only way that, that he would allow outside transmission. Um, and we didn't get a response. Um, so, so, you know, we, we tried faxing people, we tried mailing things, we showed up in people's, you know, sort of offices, we showed up at one guy's house. Uh, that also didn't get the investment that we were hoping. Um, and, um, and then uh, we, we also emailed a lot of investors. And one of those people that we emailed was Mark Cuban. Funny enough, we actually did not email him explicitly about investing in the company. Um, we actually were emailing him because at the time, in 2005, he actually had one of the more popular blogs on the internet. So we actually saw him as a, as a sort of marketing and awareness channel for the product if we, you know, sort of, you know, hey, Mark, can you write about this, this company that we're building? Um, and he responded, you know, saying, uh, you know, he'd be interested in investing, actually. So really, really kind of serendipitous that, that, that he had been thinking about the space a, a bit, um, and we got lucky that it sort of aligned with his interests. But you know, in general, the main lesson, the meta lesson is, um, there's almost no downside. Um, actually, I can't think of any downside, um, except for like a restraining order, to you know, just paying as many people as you can for opportunity. And you want to make sure, obviously, it's incredibly contextual and that you're not, you know, you know, the, you're not just sort of um, setting it to everybody, but you're saying it to the people that make most sense. Um, and, uh, and we just we did that, and we got very lucky that, uh, that Mark was, well, was the person that, um, that was interested. I wasn't getting that check in the dorm room. Oh, that was that was crazy because actually what was funny was um, was I'm not super into sports and so I didn't realize the significance of because Mark Cuban owns the Mavericks and I didn't realize the significance but my roommates at the time were huge basketball fans and they were just like they had no clue what was going on because they weren't paying attention to the internet or, or the stuff I was doing so all of a sudden you know there's a three hundred fifty thousand dollar check from Mark Cuban and they were just like I don't know what kind of weird shit you're into or or doing but 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 okay that's fine. Uh, so that was cool. So you know, anytime you can get a couple hundred thousand dollar check, and what was cool is that they mailed the check. I mean, usually you don't do that. You usually wire the funds. Um, so that was also weird. And because um, uh, anybody could have probably intercepted the check and had a good weekend or something. But um, uh, so uh, so that was good. And um, and then that kind of led to us deciding to you know we were like, well, what does Mark Cuban know that we don't know um, about how big this is going to be? And that kind of led to us realizing that we. We probably should think about dropping out, and uh, we did so three or three or four months later.